Okay, so, um, hi, um, I am Bart, and um, in this uh, talk, I will try to uh, introduce you to static context header compression and where we want to go with it in uh, Riot. So, um, next slide, please. Um, currently, we're going to um, a new reality where um, the interface to the internet is no longer predominated by screens, but also objects are added to it. Um, and in the next slide, uh, we will see that we're heading towards a web of things as we saw uh, in Philip's uh, presentation. Uh, can you go next slide, please? Um, and in the web of things, we connect anything to provide an interface to the real world. And these things, they all um, have a, a typical IoT protocol stack ranging from HTTP to MQTT, lightweight end to end for device management over co-op, and uh, even CBOR over co-op using OSCOR for end-to-end -end, uh, security. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but um, these uh, protocol stacks, they are being used to for uh, different purposes. So on uh, the upper sides, Oops, I think we lost audio. Yeah, we lost audio now. Uh, damn it. My words. And that was with testing, right? So just do yes. for uh, <laughs> like two times. <laughs> I could try to do some PowerPoint karaoke. Is, is part aware that uh, there's the issue or? I don't think so. But maybe at some point he realized that I don't uh, put a new slide. Yeah. Or maybe. <clears throat> so maybe I, I, I spoke too soon by saying that we didn't have Huge hiccups with the tooling. <laughs> uh, uh, now he realized. Okay, let, let's wait one one last try. Um, I mean, the good thing is that we still have some buffer time, or we had some buffer time. Yeah, I well, I guess like uh, the 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 some part of the wrap up is already kind of wrapped up. Is it back now? I, so, yeah. Okay, so I s apparently stopped at on the upper side. Uh, so on the upper side, there is uh, the services and semantics layer, um, the application uh, layer protocols, which we typically use uh, to define what the things uh, do. Um, and below, uh, we use the networking uh, stacks such as UDP and IPv6 and uh, the communication uh, layers define uh, how the communication works over the physical uh, part. And for short range technologies, this is mainly IEEE 802.15.4. However, it has a rather small payload size of 127 bytes. And therefore, six lopen has been uh, defined uh, to um, adapt the upper 
uh, UDP and IPv6 layers to these small payload sizes. Now, these short range technologies, they are not sufficient anymore. And therefore, long range um, technologies came into being. Um, however, the these uh, technologies also tend to have a very small uh, payload size, and this also requires a uh, adaptation layer. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, low power, yeah, low power wide area networks. Um, Examples of low power wide area networks are Sigfox, where we have 8 to 12 bytes. Uh, maximum transfer unit, LoRa, depending on the configuration, ranging from 51 to 242 bytes. NBIoT, 125 bytes. And weightless, depending on the configuration, uh, more than 10 bytes. And as we compare these, um, payload sizes with the uh, header overhead of these of the typical IoT stack, um, it seems that this won't work. So the next slide um, gives an overview of a new um, static of a new RFC, RFC 8724. And it is um, a generic framework for header compression or uh, static context header compression, which can compress uh, a co-op UDP IPv6 packet down to a single byte if it's set up correctly. Um, in the next slide, I will talk a bit more about this chic. So chic employs the fact that um, the flows in UDP, uh, the UDP IP flows in uh, low power wide area networks remain static. So the um, context, uh, these flows, they are stored on both sides of the network and the original headers can be compared um, to the uh, flows that were stored in the device on the, the ID of the flow is then sent to the other side. Um, where um, the original headers can be reconstructed using the um, ID. Uh, next slide, please. Um, however, um, yeah. So the 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 context consists of, um, as I said, um, a, a list of flows that contain a target value. Um, the target value is uh, the value inside the header field that should be matched against the context uh, using the matching operator. And the uh, compression decompression action is the action that has to be taken when um, a rule is found. And then the rule ID and possible residue will be sent to the other side. So in the next slides, um, there is um, more uh, flexibility. Um, the matching operator provides more flexibility to match a header field with a rule field. And this can um, produce a residue to the, um, to the header. So uh, the first example is the equal matching operator, as you can see for destination port in the UDP uh, rule. And if the um, uh, the 5683 or co-op port matches the uh, original header, then the compression decompression action, which is not sent, will not send any value to the other side. And can the receiving side can reconstruct the original value by taking the target value from the list. The matching the match map matching operator uh, implements an array. Um, and the mapping set, mapping sent uh, compression decompression action um, can be used to uh, the the index of the array is sent to the other side, and that index can be used to uh, reconstruct the original value from the target value field. And then finally, the most significant bit uh, matching operator can be used to. Uh, sent only um, a portion of the original um, 
value. Um, I think in the next slide, there is a example, which is probably, um, uh, okay, so on the left side, there's a lightweight M2M client, uh, and on the right side, the lightweight M2M server. In between, there's a chic gateway. And if the lightweight M2M server wants to post a, um, <clears throat> Um, we'll try to turn the light bulb on. It will send a post request to the resource of the lightweight and term client, which is um, um, like uh, 22 bytes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it can be compressed to a single byte of header and uh, two uh, payload uh, bytes. Then the uh, chic layer uh, which can work independently for the different layers. We'll inject it in the co-op layer and uh, we'll reply with a single byte, which can be translated to the 204 uh, changed value, which will be sent to the lightweight and to server. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so here was a uh, movie uh, of a LoRa client on the left side that implements a lightweight M2M client and the chic gateway, which subscribes to the network server. And then um, in the browser window, there is Lashan, which is a lightweight M2M server implementation. If you look closely to the text box on the info button, there is a, um, an IPv6 address um, with the UDP port. Um, to which the uh, endpoint is connected. Um, and now this uh, lightweight into M example uh, shows how she devices can uh, communicate end to end over IPv6, but any IPv6 enabled service uh, can be used uh, using Sheik. Um, and the next slide will show um, that um, there's also fragmentation. So if uh, packets still remain too large after compression, then there is also fragmentation defined by uh, the uh, by the standard. The fragmentation layer defines three uh, modes of reliability. There is no ACK, um, which doesn't provide any reliability. There is ACK on error where only an erroneous window will be acknowledged and the last one and egg always, which provides uh, total reliability. And the next slide shows an example. Um, now, it's, um, so the sender, um, yeah, it, it was an animated slide, but, um, so the sender will send uh, every fragment uh, to the receiver. And as you can see on the bottom, there is a bitmap. So uh, fragment three and zero were lost and the bitmap wasn't updated. Um, and also the last fragment should trigger um, the receiving side to send an acknowledgement to the uh, sender. However, if it's lost, the timer uh, will trigger the uh, sending site again um, to send the last fragments. Then the uh, receiving site will answer with an acknowledgement, which is uh, 1110110. And the sender knows that uh, the two uh, fragments, it knows which two fragments it has to resend. Um, and finally, to conclude the reception, the sender will, uh, the receiver will reply with uh, an acknowledgement. So in the next slide, um, uh, there is an um, example of my, so of my implementation in Riot. So I uh, created a library, libchic, and last week I tried to implement, uh, to integrate it in Riot. And as you can see in the Wireshark uh, um, a screenshot, there are a few Ethernet, raw Ethernet frames. So both devices are uh, native and they communicate over Ethernet. 
Um, the left window implements uh, eight bytes MTU and can uh, transmit those packets directly to the receiving site, which can um, decompress it. And finally, um, it will be again a packet of 52 bytes, um, which maps to uh, four packets uh, over eight bytes compressed using Chic. Um, okay, so next slide, please. So this was done using LibChic, which is an open source implementation of the rule context compression, the fragmentation, the reassembly, and padding management. Um, and padding management is required uh, as uh, Chic works on bit level instead of uh, byte level. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Um, and the uh, current implementation also uses uh, network memory buffers to store uh, a pointer to the headers and payload of the fragmented packet. And currently, uh, my implementation uses a pre-allocated chunk of memory um, and perhaps a single piece of it to store a fragment. Um, next slide, please. Um, however, um, um, yeah, you can just skip this slide. Um, yeah, this one. Um, however, um, in um, as as it's done very poorly in in Lucic, not to say that there's uh, no memory management at all. It can be very interesting to integrate both uh, uh, bits uh, uh, better. Um, so, however, the, uh, the, the abstraction should remain. Um, so the fragmentation management using the network memory buffers should remain inside libchic is, um, the received packets should be reordered, um, and also to calculate the, um, message integrity check over the last, uh, received packets, um, and once the packet has been reconstructed, then using the packet snip, it can be forwarded to the IPv6 layer without any copying. Also, the packet queue might be interesting for a LoRa 1 class A devices that are uh, can only receive downlink traffic um, after an uplink transmission. So if you're distributing a firmware update, for example, the uh, uh, packet you can keep uh, the complete packet and the fragmentation layer can forward uh, take the, the appropriate fragments uh, to distribute these uh, firmware updates to the end device. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and then next, um, uh, Sheik also defines um, the usage of OSCOR together with uh, Co-op to provide end-to-end -end security, and to do to do so, um, first it will compress OSCOR plain text packets using inner sheet compression. Then it will get encrypted. Then the cipher text uh, and will be added to the cipher text of the Co-op OSCOR message, and this uh, packet can be uh, compressed again by 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 using outer she compression as they call it and this part is quite interesting as i think that uh riot only has the only implementation of oscor available right now and if we integrate both um could have uh, the first uh end to end secured uh low power white area network um implementation um, okay, next slide, please. And then um, what's also there is now that we the implementation is, is working inside Riot, it can be used to compress um, HTTP uh, headers, co-op headers, MQTT headers, or maybe even in the end headers um, as it as Shiki's uh, generic framework. Um, what may, might be interesting is to run Riot on top of a LoRa 1 gateway, 
um, without MQTT and just forwarding uh, packets straight from the gateway or network server towards the internet. Um, and of course, firmware updates uh, for LP1s. Um, um, next slide, please. Okay, uh, I think that was it. Uh, so um, if you have any questions, please do ask me. And if you want to uh, discuss uh, tomorrow, um, you can locate me and we'll try to discuss anything uh, and see what we can do. Okay, thanks for the interesting talk. And, uh... I'm very glad that we finally managed to, to hear it. Um, I have a question um, regarding the, um, uh, the specification of the um, uh, of this chic. So, as far as I understand it, actually, chic could also be used to compress um, IPv6 over uh, 850.4 or basically any other uh, constraint link layer, right? So are there yeah. any, are there any um, benefits in, in actually using um, uh, the, the standards that were explicitly defined for 815.4, like I mean, six low pen? Or do you think uh, it could be also beneficial to, to use Chic for these kind of networks? For no, I, I think it can be, um, it might be useful uh, too for such networks and um, to see what 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 can be done there, I think the the compression is very efficient, and um, if you can reconstruct an IPv6 packet, then you can use it over any uh, network. Or it doesn't define uh, six low pen also defines neighbor discovery and those things. And um, currently, there is no ICMPv6 support in Chic, so that might be still an issue. Um, okay. Hi, uh, I have a question or a comment. Yeah, go ahead. Great. Uh, great, you can hear me. So, hi, I'm, I'm Juan Carlos, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for the presentation, but it was great. Uh, I'm, I'm co-author of uh, RFC 8724, and of course I know it well, but uh, I think you, you did a great uh, summary uh, presentation. Of so Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, one one comment that I wanted to 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 say is that uh, the the compression functionality and the fragmentation functionality, uh, even though they are in the same spec, uh, we discussed a lot about having them in different specs because they could be applied differently. They ended up being in the same place because they were, they being they were being worked out together and uh, they are complementary, but in fact they don't have to be uh, working together. So. Uh, we realize that, for instance, fragmentation could be applied for uh, non-IP traffic, especially uh, you mentioned the case for firmware update, and we see a value there in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sending something. So uh, the yeah. question is, uh, is this something that you have foreseen to, to decouple the two in, in your implementation, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, inside the implementation, they're decoupled. Maybe it was not too, um, uh, too clear from the... However, uh, yeah, I think I think it's fairly easy to make them complete. No, I think they're completely decoupled, and you can use them just uh, without um, one or another. Okay, great. And thanks. And, and if I may, just to 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 complement the, the answer to to Oliver, uh, the, there is talks in the in the IETF. Uh, maybe in interior or, or LP1, we don't know yet about using Chic for other protocols like PPP. So so yeah, definitely there, there's beyond what uh, part just presented that is already considered uh, being Sigfox, uh, NBIOT, LoRa1, and 802.15.4. Uh, there's talks about using it for other stuff. Okay, cool. Great to hear. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? I mean, otherwise, we can also um, have it tomorrow in the breakout session. So, okay. I don't see any other questions. So, yeah, thank you again, Bart, and also thank again all the other speakers. I think we had a very interesting networking session. Thank you. To conclude um, the.
first part of, of talks or the first day of talks. 